the late 1960s motocross across the pond, and in 1971, the first AMA championship race took place in Daytona Beach, Florida. One trait that has remained the same over the years and continues to stand out are the racetracks. These man-made creations have many similarities, but some very distinctive differences as well. Today, the series visits a circuit regarded by many as the toughest of the year. The sandy soil of Southwick makes for an ever-shifting track with deep ruts and bumps that will challenge riders, including Ricky Carmichael. RC enters this race with a perfect record, but could be tested by Honda teammate, former World Motocross champion Sebastian Tortelli on a track that has a very distinctive European feel. Well, from high above the city of Southwick, Massachusetts, it might look like a Norman Rockwell painting. The horses, Little League baseball fields, just the whole BMW flavor. But behind those trees right there lies Motocross 338, one of the oldest and toughest circuits on the AMA Chevy Trucks U.S. National Motocross Championship schedule. We are in Southwick, Massachusetts for the fourth round of U.S. Motocross. I'm your host, Davey Coombs, and joining me is former champion David Bailey and Cameron Steele. And this track is a fool's paradise. It may look like it belongs in a flower bed, but by the time the day is over, holy smokes, it's going to be rough. Well, so far in this 250 championship race, it's been all Ricky Carmichael. He has won every moto. But today here at Southwick, he gets two new challenges. Number one, this is a sand race for the first time this year. And number two, Mike LaRocco is finally back. We caught up with Mike to talk about his wrist injury and what his expectations are today here at Southwick. I definitely want to go out and uh, at least get on the podium. I mean, I I've been out a long time and I still think I can do it. I, I mean, I, I guess on top of everything, I just really need to find out where I'm at and, uh, you know, make changes from there. Well, as Mike LaRocco rejoins the series, he is not in the top ten in the point stands. Out front and perfect so far, of course, Ricky Carmichael. He has a full moto lead on his teammate, Tortelli, and then it's Tim Ferry back at third. But David Bailey, this track will break your heart. Sand tracks always fascinated me just by the way that they start out so smooth and whoop up and berm out. I used to like to walk around it after the race just to see how rough it got. And as a rider, I never remember feeling as tired as I did when I raced here at Southwood. It kind of reminds me of racing the Florida Series, Davey, and that rough track we used to come across. Actually, a couple of down there, Orlando and Cocoa Beach, Florida. The track changes itself throughout the day. And for more on that, let's go to Cameron Steele. Well, it's time for the Suzuki Fast Lap. What's going on? I ride the Sobe Suzuki with the camera on my helmet, show you guys the track. I got to try to go fast because it's called the Fast Lap. Davey Coombs has been sitting back giving me a hard time. I don't appreciate that, Davey. Troy, Ohio, you and I are doing battle, so bring your bike. Guys, at the end of the season, you can win this thing. You can come to the races, fill out an entry form, and this you can take home. But right now, we got to go out and ride the track at Southwick. What's the key? It's super sandy. Get on the back of the bike, get on the gas in the ruts, and don't let off. You let off, you're going over the bars. Let's go out and check it out. Coming down right out of the start straight. You can see the ruts. You got to line it up. Super sandy. Little tabletop. I actually got that one, Davey. You got to head back in into the woods. You're going to drop down into the frog pond. Super tight. Little crazy in here. Double lines inside or out. Guys on the ground. Passing somebody today. Revving in the sand off the little kicker. Gotta get on the gas down this hill. Lots of acceleration. Brakey bumps. Little air. Pick your line. There's 10 of them. It's Southwick. Sand. Whoops. Ugh. And that's your Suzuki Fast Lap. Thanks, Cameron. This track is going to keep getting rougher throughout the day, and it was a track that I loved, but at the same time, I, I hated it because it got so rough, and it, I knew that I was going to be more tired at this race than any other race of the season. I respectfully hated it, and it sounds like Cameron wants a piece of you, Davey. <laughs> yeah, it certainly does. Battle the helmet cams, but uh, I don't know if Kenworthy's the track he wants to race me at. I think we should probably hold off to Steel City. We could be pretty even well, and fair. that be your home track. Though. Yeah, but don't tell Cameron that. 
So as we get ready for the first 250 moto here at Southwick, our Suzuki starting lineup shows Ricky Carmichael on top, Sebastian Tortelli. You'll see the rider, number 21, Stefan Roncada. He has decided not to ride. The ankle injury just bothering him too much. But we have a new surprise, Doug Henry, the former three-time champion and all-time Southwick hero, has decided once again to come out of retirement, try to protect that AMA permanent number 19. David, he came into the track yesterday with his Yamaha on the back of a pickup truck. He's just enjoying being a local hero here this weekend and treating this thing the way he wants, being a, just a privateer. He could be under the Yamaha factory rig if he wanted to be. Well, for more on Doug Henry's one-day comeback, let's go back to Cameron. Well, motocross is serious business. Right behind me, a guy that's been so serious about it. He has a championship. He's won this race, and his name's Doug Henry. Today, he's trying to keep his national number. It may be the only race he comes to all year. He's out here to do battle. He showed up in his own pickup truck as his own mechanic, and that's how he's doing it, his way. Well, Henry's doing it his way, but he is getting some help. That was his wife, Stacy, that you saw getting the starting line ready for him. They go off a paved starting launch pad, but right now the cart is sideways, and the first 250 moto is ready to go, and they're off. And right up the middle, you see Jamie Brockman coming on the outside. He is a privateer from Australia, but just like that, there comes Ezra Lusk, and right behind them is Doug Henry and Keith Johnson. I didn't see Ricky Carmichael anywhere inside the top 10. There he just went by, but he's going to have a lot of work to do. And Doug Henry right there, number 19, they got a great start. Well, this is the first time this season, of course, that Henry's run the front of the pack. It's the first time he's raced, but Ezra Lusk, yes, this is the first time that he has had his Kawasaki out front. There's Brockman, and, and they're starting to go by. And Doug Henry goes right by Ezra Lusk. That was a local line, David. He knows this track very well. He and John Dowd both. Dowd, I'm surprised he didn't get a great start. He's been nailing the whole shots lately. I thought for sure he'd get a good one here. This is just unbelievable. Doug Henry comes from being a farmer to leading the first moto here at Southwick. Like, David, I know he's grown up right here at this track and rides here all the time, or at least used to, but to lead a national moto is just unbelievable. Well, I don't know how good his conditioning is going to be. His knee isn't 100% from when he tweaked it back at the Pontiac Supercross and he was attempting a comeback there, but Doug does know this track very well. And for four or five laps or so, he should be in the, right there in the hunt, forcing guys like Lusk to ride hard to get around. Up through the Buckley Berm, it is Henry, Lusk, Brockman, Keith Johnson, then it looks like Moto Triple X rider Kyle Lewis and LaRocco just passed him come out of the corner. Morocco, of course, this week riding the CRF 450R. He decided to go all four-stroke for the Outdoor Nationals after riding the CR 252 stroke the first part of the Supercross Series, but then he broke his wrist. Well, he raced a few classes at Redbud where they're going to be visiting in a couple of rounds from now during the week off and won all three classes, trying to get himself fit, but racing at this pace is a whole different deal. You go to Red Butt on an amateur day, you're racing against the Throttle Jockey Brothers. You come here, and you got the likes of Doug Henry. And there's Stacy, we mentioned her earlier, leaning over, giving her hubby a go-ahead. It's just, you can hear the fans yelling, David, what a neat moment in motocross. This is great. What an amazing deal for Doug to be able to get a great start. And then that line, just smoke and lust before the downhill. He went all the way around the outside, kind of slingshot it, put him on the inside, coming into the corner at the bottom. And when he came out of there, the fans went completely crazy. They cannot believe what they're seeing, and neither can I. Back up to the front of the pack. Two laps now on the book, and Henry continues the lead. There's Lusk. There's LaRocco. Now up to third, and in fourth place comes Ricky Carmichael. What a charge Carmichael put on. He had to get around Lewis and Ferry. You saw just going by right there, and Ricky is flying. He was faster yesterday in practice after the first session when Tortelli set the pace. Right now, he is on a mission. Ricky Carmichael's always done well here, David. He won the last three times. Whoa! <laughs> that almost looked like Pontiac all over there. I was just going to say, Ricky Carmichael, very comfortable on this track. He's won the last three years here in his class, but this is the first time he's come here on a Honda. Well, it's been the same for some of the other races, too. In fact, races where he's never won on a 250 and never won on a Honda, and both. And he's been perfect so far this season, and he's not wanting these leaders to get too far away and build any confidence. He's trying to crush their hopes right now. We'll be back. Doug Henry out front and south. Now the time has come. 
It's summer. Time to buy a Honda. Because right now, you can ride off with any new Honda for $29 a month for the first six months. That's any Honda. $29 a month. Just in time for summer. Plus, you can get up to $600 in bonus bucks on select models. Imagine any Honda for $29 a month. See why this summer is red hot at your Honda dealer before time runs out. This is Silverado Heavy Duty. Available with the Duramax diesel. The most powerful diesel you can get in a pickup. Silverado Heavy Duty. More truck from Chevy. At the Beef and Bird Cook-Off, does anyone use a gas grill? You couldn't get anybody out here to cook with gas. Definitely want to use charcoal. Because when it comes to flavor... Proven fact, the charcoal is better than gas. And the charcoal of choice... Kingsford, for sure. Kingsford Charcoal, because taste is everything. Hey, 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 hey! Oh, you safe! <laughs> hey, making a click call? Just dial down the center with 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-C-T. It's free for you and cheap for them. What do you say we bail? <laughs> Save on every call. Use 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. They've been called a dream team, a gas to watch. Tony Kornheiser, Michael Lupon. This is the best show on television. Pardon the interruption. 5.30 Eastern, weekdays on ESPN. And again at 7 on ESPN2. It's time. presentation of AMA Motocross is brought to you by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. Honda, performance first. And by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles. Well, you are not seeing a replay of years gone by at Southwick. That is Doug Henry out front, Ezra Luskin second, and Ricky Carmichael is coming. Well, you know, this has been all fun and games for Doug up to this point, but this might be his home track and his home fans, but as soon as he feels that pressure of Carmichael back there, he's going to understand this is Carmichael's series. And a three-way battle for the lead right there. Lust tried to pass Henry, and he almost gave the spot up to Carmichael, who was coming like a freight train. That's what it feels. You can hear him back there. He runs that thing so wide open, and then LaRocco's right there as well goes Carmichael on the inside, down inside of Lusk, and he takes over second. Let's go down to Cameron in the mechanics area. Stacy starting out with the lead in the first lap. It's a great way to come back to racing. Oh, I tell you, he never ceases to amaze me, this guy. Seems like the fans are really on his back. Yeah. Everybody cheering. It's so awesome. This, this is definitely home for him. Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks. Woo! They have just got to be loving this. I know the Southwick faith war, but like you said, David, it's a warm, fuzzy feeling until Ricky Carmichael comes up behind you. Well, he's going to understand why Ricky's been winning all those motos here in a moment because there's no way in the world Ricky's going to let him have that. LaRocco is pushing Carmichael. I'm a little bit surprised to see that. I thought LaRocco might just be playing things smart, trying to ease back into the series, but it looks like he's trying to go for the moto win. What does this do to a rider like Ezra Luskin? You have two guys, Doug Henry, and Mike LaRocco haven't even raced this year, leading you after three laps on the roughest track on the circuit. It messes with your whole psychological psyche. You just you cannot believe what's happening. And right there goes Carmichael, a little inside out, but Henry's going to challenge him on the inside, and he holds him off, and now LaRocco might go past Carmichael. Doug Henry is not easy to pass. He's not going to be willing to give it up just this quick, and LaRocco is really making things tough on Carmichael right now. He cannot afford to go out wide and take a look at Henry without LaRocco sneaking in there. Which of these surprises you more, Henry up there or LaRocco? It's a tie, really. I mean, I know they've both been getting ready for this race, so it's really 50-50, but Carmichael is probably the one that's more surprised than we are, just going, man, I thought I could get around these guys, but it's not easy. Down the hill, this is a battle of courage right there. Well, you know what, Carmichael's going to win that battle every time. Maybe a young Doug Henry, but not a vacationing Doug Henry. Now, and Ricky looks back at him like, hey, nice job. So Carmichael back out front, just as he's been for the first six motos of this AMA Chevy Trucks U.S. Motocross Championship Series. Carm oh, and now LaRocco goes by Henry, but wait, Henry's on the inside, and he holds him right back off. So Henry, very stubborn in second place. 
Now he understands how to get around this racetrack and how to make all his lines come together. It's making it tough. Made it tough for Ricky to get around. It made it tough for LaRocco. He's making these guys earn it. Right there. Looked like a little bit of Matador defense from Doug Henry. It kind of gave LaRocco that spot. David, he's got to be getting tired at this point. Well, he's probably just trying to catch his breath. I don't think he'll be tired just yet. He's going to get tired more than these other guys, probably. But right now, it's just his heart's probably pounding from going, man, I can't believe I was in the lead. And look at all the great talent that's surrounding him. And now you see Tim Ferry has joined the charge. He is up to fifth place. Ferry didn't have that good of a start, but like Ricky Carmichael, he's from Florida, and there is a lot of sand in Florida. Look at the lead. One lap. And Carmichael is gone. LaRocco doing a nice job holding on to second and trying not to let Carmichael get too far away. And just behind this lead group out here is Kyle Lewis. Whoa, the three of them hit together with, with just a little bit of contact. Ferry goes from fifth to third. And Lusk still can't get around Doug Henry. Oh, there he got him right there. Coming out of the mechanics here. We made sure to give him a little tap, too, because he's trying to get up here and race in this series. Doug's just doing this one race deal. Lusk is like, hey, get out of the way. Let me get up there and battle with these guys. I'm in this for the long haul. This was Carmichael just leaning in on Henry from the outside. You got to have a lot of confidence. You know, you can just get into that firm and not have a guy just shove you out over it. Chance of him going down. He looks back at him like, hey, you know what? Appreciate it. I know you could have put me over the berm and you didn't, so thanks a lot. That's respect right yeah. there. Doug Henry's never wrote like that. Now, he's, he's tough to get around, and I know that there's some riders out there like Morocco and Ferry and Maybe Pastrana, they're a little frustrating to try to pass and to, to race with, but I think in the end, he understands that, hey, you know what, you guys can have it. I just was enjoying being up there for a while. Well, it's three great laps for Doug Henry. But now the pursuit of Ricky Carmichael is on, and it's about 1,000 cc's of horsepower coming up behind him. It's LaRocco in second and Ferry in third on the big open-class four-strokes. Now, I think Ferry and LaRocco have a tough time around each other as well. They're both hard to pass. They're both stubborn. They like to hold on to their line. They fight for it. I'm anxious to see what happens because Ferry does very well in sand. I know he's not 100%. He seems to be favoring some injuries still, a little bit of a sore hip. But LaRocco's not 100% either, so this is fairly evenly matched. And, and strangely enough, I think LaRocco is starting to reel Ricky in a little bit. Well, we'll see what happens towards the end of the moto. I don't think Ricky cares if they reel him in a little bit here and there, but he, I think Ricky knows and would bet everything he has in his deep pockets that by the end of the moto, these guys are going to be further back than they are now. Let's go back down the mechanics area where Cameron is with Mike LaRocco's mechanic. Well, not a bad way for Mike LaRocco to come back to race. He's sitting in second place right now. Yeah, this is what he needed to do. He needed to get up there and show himself he can run with these guys. It's been off so long now, but we're back. How's he feeling? How's the injuries? He's about 80% right now, so we got a lot more to expect from him. I'd be scared when he's 100%. And he might be 100% by the time we get to his home track, and that's Red Bud in Michigan. But right now, it's Southwick, Massachusetts, and the battle is for second between LaRocco and Ferry. Well, like I was saying, both these guys are a little bit injured right now and not riding up to full capacity. And I think if that being the case physically, then the sand style racetrack here is probably going to favor Tim Ferry a little bit more. Speaking of the racetrack, David, it looks like it's kind of tacking up a little differently. A little bit of rain here this week. Not your normal sand track. No, it's, it's usually a lot drier and a little fluffier and it tends to be a little bit more slick. But here, because of the extra dampness in the track, it's a little bit more like a clay. The sand is actually packing together. The bumps are a little sharper here and there, especially coming down these dropaways. You see the lead clear back to Lusk. So Lusk did get a little frustrated trying to get around Doug Henry, and those front three got away from him. But the way Lusk is riding and the way he tends to ride and come on strong at the end, it wouldn't be surprised if he caught those guys again. Next behind Doug Henry is Kyle Lewis, the Moto Triple X privateer, like LaRocco on the big four-stroke Honda. Kyle Lewis has had a great outdoor series. He has, and you know, he's a veteran. He's been racing so long. He used to come out and practice with Johnny O'Mara and I back at the Honda track in the early 80s. He's still out there. He knows how to ride the sand. He's getting more comfortable on that big four bike. And some of the factory guys, looks like he's going to go to the inside of Henry right there, and Henry's finally got to give it up. But Lewis is the benefactor of a lot of factory guys dropping out this season, and Tortelli is still uh, trying to work his way up from a crash in the first lap with David Billiman. He's just inside the top ten now, and Billiman looks like he's out of the race. 
So as we reset the playing field here in this first 250 moto, Carmichael, LaRocco, Barry, Lusk, and Kyle Lewis. We'll be back in a moment. names in motocross and off-road racing have an even bigger name under them, Suzuki. Do you want to be the next big name? Get on a Suzuki RM or DRZ today. My mom's letting my sister cook tonight. I'd rather go to Olive Garden for their chicken from broccoli. They make it with fresh broccoli and sautéed chicken, herbs, and all oh, the garlic cream sauce. It's so delicious. And I don't have to make believe I like it. Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Customizing your car? Stop by Monarchy for performance mufflers with attitude. High energy, good look, and increased horsepower. Plus, a free race game. That's Monarchy performance. Monarchy, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. This weekend, Saturday at 7, baseball in its purest form. Catch all the excitement of the NCAA College World Series. Then at 8, Larry Dixon continues his quest to break a host of top fuel records in NHRA action from Ohio. Sunday at 2 on ESPN, Dawn Staley and the Charlotte Sting face Teresa Weatherspoon and the New York Liberty. And on Sunday Night Baseball, Jason Giambi and the Yankees head cross town to battle Mike Piazza and the Mets on ESPN. Here's good news. Rogaine, Propecia, and the latest advances in hair transplantation can restore your hair. But what's right for you? Now there's a free video that helps you decide. Call toll-free 1-888-900-HAIR for your free video from Medical Hair Restoration, the nation's leading medical group in the treatment of hair loss. That's toll-free 1-888-900-HAIR. Get the video and your hair back. The 1998 Southwick 250 National approached fairy tale proportions after all was said and done. Local hero Doug Henry from nearby Oxford, Connecticut won both motos convincingly. Henry was considered among the top racers in the world at the time, especially in riding in the mud. And that particular talent stood out that day at Southwick. As a result of double moto wins, Henry was able to take over the points lead in the 250 National Championship chase. One more fact of interest, it was the first win ever in the AMA National Circuit for Yamaha's YZ 400 f Well, looked a lot the same like that earlier today when Doug Henry was leading number 19 on that Yamaha wearing that box gear. But instead, it's a new era, and it's Ricky Carmichael out front. A little ways back, the battle for second, LaRocco and Ferry. And you can see the track here at Southwick, as expected, getting rough and getting rutted. Way rutted coming up that hill right there. You can see those guys really trying to pick a good rut as they get up there. And that downhill is getting worse and worse. You can see LaRocco having to get back to that inside, hearing Ferry coming. That's one of the great places to pass on this racetrack, coming out of the woods right there. Morocco continues to be very impressive in his first race back in a long time. And uh, there's Nick Way, and it looks like he is off the side of the track. This was also his first race back. Nick Way looks like he's out of the race. No ways back is Doug Henry, and then coming up finally, Sebastian Tortelli. You see he's got a little bit faster pace, too. And Doug knows it. There's not going to be any fight from Doug. You can bet on this one. You see how fast that Tortelli was able to jump down towards that frog pond using a big breaking bump like a jump and how fast he gains on Doug Henry. His pace is there, but the starts are killing him. Trying the outside line now as they go back up in the middle section of the track, tries a little inside out. Henry, like you were saying before, David, very stubborn when he holds on to a position, even if he's been farming for the last year. 
Well, he gives it up right there because Tortelli was just that much faster, a little bit smarter line. And, you know, Doug, he's not going to totally give it to these guys, but I, didn't, I just don't think he's got the energy right now to really fight with Tortelli, whose lap times are about three seconds faster a lap than his are right now. And you can already see that gap open up. Now, Tortelli is riding beautiful, but whether it's a bad start or a crash in the first lap, he's just giving more and more points to, to, to uh, Carmichael out front. Look at the way he just leans into that outside berm. It makes this corner a little bit sharper, but if it gets the pass done, well, then it's better. Back up to the front of the pack, Ricky Carmichael. Just having a field day here at Southwick. You see Chad Watts, his mechanic, holding the board out, and they're getting ready to lap. That's John Sebastian Wall right there. Carmichael starting to work his way into the points from the back end, lapping the field here at Southwick. Well, it, I wouldn't be surprised if he laps up into the top 10 because his lap times have not changed. They're faster than what they were yesterday. The track's even rougher. So, Ricky's a gamer. When it matters the most, it's when he picks up his pace and just tries to crush the field. He doesn't want anybody. It's not like he's got a big lead and then he goes, okay, I'll just cruise now. He's in shape enough that he goes out and keeps riding faster and faster so that one day he does get a challenge, he's not going to be like, uh-oh, what do I do now? He'll have the strength and confidence to be able to ride 100% the entire way. There you see the board coming out for Kyle Lewis. He's got a factory Honda behind him, and that's Tortelli. Lewis holding on to the fifth position, and Tortelli in sixth as they come into the back section. Very rough part here, and Tortelli goes right by him. Look at the way he jumps down into that berm. I love that. The way he used to like to do that, but he couldn't do it like that every lap because you hit so many braking bumps before you get there. Wrecks your timing. And you can see how deep those ruts are getting coming up that hill, a little deeper each lap. You miss one corner here at Southwick, and it's going to mess you up for the next two or three. Yeah, it's the, the lines all have to come together. The first time I raced, first couple of times I raced her, in fact, I always felt like when I was going down a straightaway, I needed to be on the other side of the straightaway to set myself up better for the corner, but it's, it's tough to get there. There's so many bumps and holes. Now, back up to the battle for second, LaRocco and Ferry. They are chasing after Ricky Carmichael, but right there, Right there, it looked like LaRocco just kind of looked outside of his bike, and he came off the berm, too. Yeah, he blew that one. He was trying to come down that sweeper. It's just a, a continuous left-hander. He almost make a 360-degree corner right there, and Ferry was able to hug the inside. LaRocco had too much speed and had to drift to the outside. I don't think maybe that he had the strength in his wrist to just make that bike turn tight. So he's done a fine job to be able to hold Ferry off for this long, but... I don't think he's really got the strength, and to tell you the truth, I don't think his expectations are as such to go ahead and put up that fight for the entire race. Whoa, and a rider goes down. I think that's, yes, it's Keith Johnson, CernixRacing.com KTM, and Johnson is another local hero, just like Doug Henry, and he was riding in eighth at that point. And see, he understands this track. He knows how it can reach up and grab you like that. That just shows how easy it is to go down. That's what LaRocco was trying to avoid by riding a little bit outside his comfort zone, holding off Ferry. Here comes Carmichael up through the back section. He is in complete control of this race, of this series, of the Outdoor Nationals in general. David, going back to the Southwick National last year, Ricky Carmichael has won 11 out of the 12 nationals he's ridden, including that 125 effort at Steel City. The last time he lost, Washougal to Kevin Windham. Kevin Windham, as you know, way out of the picture right now on the sidelines. Yeah, that was a great day for Kevin, and he definitely earned those victories at Washougal last year over Ricky. It seemed like all that did was make Ricky even more mad, more prepared to keep on winning. And there's the checkered flag for Ricky Carmichael. After a slow start, he's got number seven in the books. We will be back to talk to our winner in a moment. There's never been any doubt as to which bikes dominate the sport of Supercross. Honda's CR125R and CR250R. Ricky Carmichael, 250 Supercross champion. Travis Preston, 125 West Supercross champion. For Honda, that's 21 AMA Supercross titles. Champions ride red. This is Silverado Heavy Duty, with the most towing capacity of any heavy duty pickup.
Silverado Heavy Duty. More truck. From Chevy. Armor All Protected Wipes. Armor All Shine and Protection in a wipe. At 7-Eleven, we have over 300 drinks, and they're all really cold. Now get two bottles of Gatorade for three bucks. I'm Jay Moore. ESPN likes my show so much, they moved it to prime time. He's tough, yet sensitive. He's smart, yet humble. More Sports kicks off the block with Paul Pierce of the Boston Celtics, Tuesday, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Real Classics Rocky Month continues with Rocky Three. Plus, more behind-the-scenes inside from the people who made Rocky great. Sylvester Stallone and Mr. T in a real classic, Rocky Three, 9 Eastern Sunday, only on ESPN Classic. Welcome back to Southwick, Massachusetts. Motocross 338, the fourth round of the 2002 AMA Chevy Trucks U.S. Motocross Championships. I'm your host, Davey Coons, with David Bailey, and Cameron Steele is down in the winner's circle right now with our first moto winner, Team Honda's Ricky Carmichael. Well, Ricky, it really didn't start out exactly the way you planned it, but it ended up the way you wanted it. Are you surprised that Doug Henry was leading in the early laps? Uh, that doesn't surprise me. He always comes here and races and does really good, and uh, I got a bad start, man. I don't know what place I was in, but uh, it was good for me mentally to uh, come from behind instead of getting the start. That was a fun race. Well, the fans surely enjoyed it. Talk about the track out there. It looks like it's just so rough, and by the end of Moto2, it's going to be horrible. Oh, it's going to be terrible. I mean, uh, it got so rough out there when we were uh, racing just in our race. So uh, second moto is going to be tough, but uh, I'm going to put my head down and see what we can do. Well, congratulations on this moto. We'll see you in Moto2. Thanks, Cameron. Appreciate it. See a little scrub on Ricky Carmichael there. That's because he's got a bet with his 125 teammate Ernesto Fonseca. He's not going to shave till Ernie gets a podium, but not a problem for Carmichael. His seventh moto win in a row in the books. Ferry second. The big surprise, Mike LaRocco in third. Let's go back down to the winner's circle. Cameron is with Tim Ferry. Timmy, by the looks of your jersey and your face, you had to work pretty hard to earn that second place. Yeah, it was definitely, it wasn't an easy second place. Uh, you know, me and Ricky had to come from the back a little bit. He got by me, and I couldn't really quite keep up with him there at the beginning, so I just, uh, you know, put a little pressure on Mike, and he finally started making some mistakes. I figured he's, you know, not being racing, he's getting a little tired, so when I made the pass. As we move on with the championship, I'm sure it weighs on your mind. You got to stay close to Carmichael, but you're going to actually need to beat him to catch him in the points. What's it going to take to do that? Um, I, you know, I, I'd like to get a clear track with him. You know, he, that's a that's the worst hole shot he's gotten all year, I think. And, uh, and I just didn't ride good those first few laps, and I need to ride a little better towards the middle of the race. You know, if we were together, I think I could stay with him, but you know, I just didn't ride good at the beginning of that that moto. Fine effort for Tim Perry, and this is Mike LaRocco. He's having a hard time finding the winner's circle. It's been so long since he's been down there. But now we got to go back to the pits for our Honda Tech tip with number four's main man. For this week's Honda Tech tip, I'm Chad Watts. We're going to show you the different setting for a sand track like Southwick compared to a normal hard track outdoor. One of the main differences is the tires. If you look, it's a taller profile tire, which allows the dirt to clean out. And then you go here to your suspension, which is the same setting, just a little bit of clicker adjustment, no valving change. Then your carburation, you need to get quite a bit more fuel into it for the bike not to run lean. Then you go to your shock, which is pretty much the same setting, just also clicker adjustment. And then you go to your rear tire, which is also a wider profile, taller knobs. And for that, that's pretty much the only difference between a sand track and a hard track. Well, to Chad Watts, it's not a lot of work, David, but you know if you got to get your son Sean's bike for a sand race like this, it's a lot of work. It is. The sand gets everywhere. And the main thing is just keeping it out of the engine. you got to keep that filter clean, and when you pull it out, sand drops in there. Let's go back to camera. Mike, not a perfect way to come back to motocross racing, but a very solid way, third place in motor number one. Yeah, I'm glad to get my CRF uh, 450 up here on the podium, and I just do what I could. I mean, it was my first race back. I kind of needed to, uh, you know, check where everybody's at and, uh, you know, make some changes and, and hit the books and uh, come back trying to get ready. 
Well, I was talking to your mechanic earlier, and he's saying you're about 80%. What, what's your thoughts on that? you 80%. When can we see 100% of Mike LaRocco? Well, I mean, I had a tough time out there. My wrist is uh, is definitely no problem, I and mean, everything works fine. But, uh, you know, my strength isn't there. I mean, I lost all control about halfway, and it just let me beat myself up. So uh, it, it's got work to do. But, um, you know, on the upside, it is working. I just got to get more stamina in it. Tell me, can you hear the fans? I mean, it's obvious you're one of the fan favorites out here. Everybody going nuts. Does that push you along? Does that help you yeah, on your comeback? Definitely. I mean, it's great to be back, and, uh, you know, I definitely miss that, and uh, I'll do what I can for him trying to get back on top. Right on. We'll see you in Moto2. Thanks. Well, this Southwick track, we said at the top of the show, David, it'll break your heart, and I know it broke yours. In the AMA record book, your name is not on top of one of the Southwick Nationals, and you're one of the best sand riders in the world. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up. <laughs> Uh, I, like I said, I loved it, but it, I hated it at the same time because it just saps you. I, I've never, I can never remember being as tired between motos as I was here at Southwick. And when they give you that first call of the staging here for the second moto, you're just thinking, already, oh, you're so hot, you, your stuff isn't cleaned off yet. You need a lot of help between motos to get everything ready to go back out there with any kind of energy at all. You see the, all the different lines down through there. The funny thing is, that is the smoothest part of the racetrack. Well, as we get ready for the second moto, let's take a look behind the scenes with this week's Racer X Pit Pass. Welcome to Massachusetts. Cool. I might go all the way here. that brought you the Hayabusa and GSXR sport bikes comes the all-new Quad Sport Z400. Is it still showing off if no one's around to see you? The bench on the right is being painted with Krylon. The bench on the left with Rust-Oleum. After just 12 minutes, Krylon is dry to the touch. Rust-Oleum, well... Um, gee. Oh, not good. Oh, oh, boy. For a smooth, professional finish, fast-drying Krylon performs like no other. Krylon. No runs, no drips, no errors. Hey, I guess somebody's had a busy day today. Well, make sure back pain doesn't cramp your schedule tomorrow. Grab a new Thermacare air-activated heat wrap before you hit the sack. It gets warm and stays warm, deeply relaxing tight muscles. So circulation flows in, helping pain flow out. So by the next day, you're moving and grooving. Oh, yeah, all day long. Introducing Thermacare heat wraps. Find them in the pain reliever aisle. Warning. This movie is so exhilarating, it can only be seen in IMAX theaters and other large format cinemas. Now, the ultimate movie with the ultimate thrills is on the ultimate big screen. ESPN's Ultimate X. This guy's crazy. Rated PG, now playing at IMAX theaters and large format cinemas. Check local listings. This is the bus right here. This is my bus driver, Boo. This is my dad. He's uh, he's getting the dinner ready for the outdoors and uh, getting it, get dinner ready for this evening. We got my Supercross Championship trophy right here. I won this year. That was, that's pretty nice. Those are uh, far and few between right there. And these are just some of the uh, trophies I didn't want to uh, bring back. Just feel like in an idiot carrying on the plane sometimes. We got a uh, 
bicycle right here for when I'm on the road and need to warm up or something. Got a shower right here to keep myself clean. After the outdoors, you know, it, uh, you get, you get kind of dirty. Back here is the bedroom, and got a TV back here to uh, also watch uh, TV at night. It's pretty cool, you know, a nice little feature that Monaco has in their buses. Uh, so it's nice, it's relaxing. This is uh, really awesome for the outdoors, you know, to just relax. But uh, so you got the TV up here, can play the same stuff as up there. It's nice. Comes in handy for sure. It's nice. Man, what a life. He's going to need a bigger bus pretty soon to carry all those trophies on. Let's go to the camera. Down on the starting gate for the second moto. In moto number one, it was all the guy right behind me, the number four Honda of Ricky Carmichael. Some people are saying, though, that maybe Tim Ferry has the speed to keep him in check. Let's not forget Mike LaRocco and Sebastian Tortelli was going super fast in moto number one. He just didn't have the start. And, of course, the fan favorite, Doug Henry's on the gate. Maybe he can get it done. We'll have to see. It's almost time to go racing here in the 250s. Taking a look at our Suzuki starting lineup, Carmichael at the top of the field. Tortelli needs a better start if he's going to challenge Carmichael. We see John down a little ways down. We expect a little more from him. Same as Tortelli, not a good start. Again, missing Stefan Roncada. He decided not to race, and he is joined on the sidelines by David Villeman. Turned his ankle around, as you said, David Bailey, and he decided not to enter. Now, the card is sideways as we get ready to go with the second moto at Southwick, and they are off. And once again, right up the middle of the field, it is Keith Johnson this time. I thought it was Henry, but it's Keith Johnson. There you see Carmichael, Kyle Lewis, and Mike LaRocco, a clean start. And right there again goes Doug Henry, and he's going to lead the moto again here at Southwick. Well, he worked so hard to get into the lead, but he didn't have that great of a start in either moto. I mean, he was up there, but he had to pass a few guys to get into the lead. This time he gets it done before that corner, which is where he passed Lust for first moto. If Doug could somehow ride the way he rides that first half a lap, the entire moto, he'd be like Carmine. Well, as you know, in motocross, David, there's no shortcuts. Unless he cuts the track, he's going to have to find his way to the gym between now and check the flag, and it's not going to happen. Uh, he just doesn't have the consistency of training and all of that, that that Carmichael has built up. And what Carmichael does actually now is nothing magical. It's just that he's been so consistent at working on the right things and working hard for so long that it seems like he's Superman. But, you know, he took him a long time to get where he is. And you hear the crowd hollering and yelling. Their local hero, Doug Henry's put another lap in the record books out front. Carmichael is second. Then it's Keith Johnson and Kyle Lewis with a little bit better start than he had in the first moto. Running in fourth, down into the center part of the track. Little double jump, but it's a big double jump for Carmichael. And just like that, he's going to go around Doug Henry. Goodbye. That's the end of that. And I've always, I wondered if he could clear this whole thing. I thought about that when the track was smooth. They probably could jump all the way up onto that flat section. But once the track gets rough, there's no way. Doug has got a great opportunity right here. Maybe to check out what Carmichael does and kind of keep pace with him a little bit. And he's not lunch. giving up. Look at this, right around the outside. Here's Carmichael off the start, dude. See how those guys sit a lot straighter up, and as soon as they get out into that sand, they lean back a little bit just to try to get more traction. A couple bikes going end over end right there. I can't tell who that is. I hope it's not Tortelli again. And then Carmichael doubling through there, taking a little bit of a risk, landing, kind of landed on top of that berm right there and almost plowed the front end, but it worked. Now he's in the lead. Here's your battle for fourth. That's Keith Johnson, the privateer on the KTM. Round the outside comes Tim Ferry, and Tim Ferry goes by him for fourth. But you know what? For Tim Ferry and these guys, you've got Doug Henry you got to get around before you even get to Ricky Carmichael. We're talking about in the first moto, Henry, a very stubborn guy to pass. Ricky Carmichael is in the most perfect position he could be on the track here at Southwood. Now, even if these guys didn't have to deal with Doug Henry and they had a clear shot at Carmichael, it still would be tough because Ricky is just, he's riding fast enough to win. He's, he's going hard in the early going, then he just maintains a good gap over these guys. But I think he's got more if they could get close. Here comes Ferry around the outside. He gets by Lewis, so Ferry up into third. So you have a Honda in first, two Yamahas, another Honda. And then the Kawasaki Vesper Lust, here's that pass again. Well, it's a lot like what we saw Tortelli do in the first moto. It's just a, a Sand Riders line out there on the outside, feet up, 
take a look down the mechanics there. Sean Hamlin's pulled over. We have not talked about Hamlin yet today. Not quite having the races that he had at Hangtown and High Point. Eighth in the first moto, but his second moto is already over. Yeah, that looks like he's going to be okay, but some deal with some, something wrong with the bike, it looks like it's going to take him out of the race. And it's too bad because he had a pretty good run going. He was always the, the top 10 rider now, and it wasn't that long ago. Not that many people knew who he was. There you see Morocco in fifth, sixth place is Keith Johnson, then Lusk, and then here comes John Dow on the big 520 KTM. Now back up to the battle for second. Henry continues to hold off Ferry. If Ricky Carmichael's not here, Henry's having a heck of a day. There goes Ferry to pass him. So now the stage is set. Tim Ferry got a clear track between himself and Carmichael. You just saw Carmichael go out of the picture. He's already gapped the field. We will see if Ferry can close that gap at Southwick when we come back to finish the second moto. I see you're checking out our new quad runner, Ozark 250. Mm. Yeah, it's Suzuki's latest sport utility ATV. This baby's got it all. More suspension travel than the Yamaha Bear Tracker, more ground clearance than the Honda Recon, and a bigger engine than the Kawasaki Bayou 250. Mm. How about a test ride? Okay. Introducing the quad runner, Ozark. The first sport utility 250 ATV from Suzuki. Visit your local Suzuki dealer and get $300 cash back or low APR during Suzuki Summer Sizzler event. At the Beef and Bird Cook-Off, does anyone use a gas grill? You couldn't get anybody out here to cook with gas. Definitely want to use charcoal. Because when it comes to flavor... Proven fact, the charcoal is better than gas. And the charcoal of choice... Kingsford, for sure. Kingsford Charcoal, because taste is everything. Oh, my mom's letting my sister cook tonight. But I'd rather go to Olive Garden for their chicken con broccoli. They make it with fresh broccoli, sauteed chicken, herbs, and all oh, the garlic cream sauce. It's so delicious. And I don't have to make believe I like it. Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. No person, person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, on the basis of sex, sex be excluded from participation in, be denied, denied, denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination, discrimination under any, any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Join ESPN for a celebration of female athletes on the 30th anniversary of Title IX, featuring a special Saturday night town hall meeting. ESPN's Women in Sports Weekend begins. At Joe's Crab Shack, we gone crab crazy. Hey, Joe! Run into Joe's Crab Shack for our awesome mouth-watering snow crab dinner for only $9.99. That's right, a pound of hot steaming snow crab with sides, all for just $9.99. Get them any way you like them. Barbecue, garlic, or steam. A full pound. Ooh-wee! It's good stuff. So what are you waiting for? Get to Joe's Crab Shack now for a pound of snow crab for just $9.99. You gotta go eat at Joe's. At Ketterman's Jewelers, our diamonds are real shiny. Hey, what happened? Someone quick, get a flashlight. I got an idea. Ellen, where are you going? I got it. What is it? It's a ring box. What good is a ring box? It's a ring box from Ketterman's Jewelers, because at Ketterman's Jewelers, our diamonds are real shiny. Wow, that sure is shiny. Great work, Ellen. I knew they were real shiny. Ketterman's Jewelers, family owned and operated since 1951. In 1981, Rick Two-Hip Johnson was named AMA 125cc Rookie of the Year. But despite this accomplishment, there was nothing to indicate that Johnson would become one of the greatest motocross riders in U.S. history. But that is exactly what happened. 61 national and supercross wins later, plus seven AMA championships and several star turns on winning versions of Team USA at the Motocross and Trophy Donations, Ricky Johnson retired from motocross. Ever since, he has enjoyed success as an off-road and buggy driver. He moved to Mooresville, North Carolina with his wife Stephanie and their children to pursue a NASCAR career in TV opportunities and broadcasting. Rick knows how to win, that's for sure. And every time he was on the starting line with me, I worried about him more than anybody else out there on the racetrack. He and Bob Hanna were the toughest competitors I ever faced. Speaking of tough competitors, look at Tortelli all over Ezra Lusk as they come into the back section. Right there, Tortelli jumps down into the frog pond, and he's going to move into fifth place. And I'm surprised that somebody else hasn't figured out that line of his. It's so much faster, and it eliminates having to hit two or three of those holes. 
carries your momentum down in the bottom, too. Yeah, I used to like to do that, but it, like I said, it was hard to make, get consistent with it because it got so rough later in the day, but he is starting to really reel in Henry now. Sebastian Tortelli once again plagued by a bad start. Right there, you saw him slingshot off the bank up near the trees. He goes by Henry, and now he's in fourth. Is it too late for him to catch up to, well, Carmichael might be gone, but what about Ferry? I don't think he cares about anybody else but Carmichael right now. He's losing more chunks of points. Look at this. Mike LaRocco is now in the mechanics area. Let's go down to Cameron. Well, this is definitely not good news to see Mike LaRocco on the side of the track. Mike, what happened? Why are you sitting here in the pits? I was just not ready. I mean, it worked about 25 minutes of the first moto, and then uh, it got pretty sore, so... <laughs> back in between so I, I tried to ride but it was still a bit too sore well that makes sense i mean i think the guys at honda are going look we need you well we don't need you right now in this series carmichael's taking care of that we got a lot of tortelli in there for backup and you know be smart don't go down again and make that risk a career ending problem and you know what we might need mike LaRocco for team usa at the motocross the nations to take place in california at the end of september now doug henry Still going back a little bit. John Dowd is old NESC teammate, rival, everything. These guys grew up together riding up there in New England. Goes by him again. Uh, Henry, what can you say? A fine effort, David, but uh, like Mike LaRocco, it seems like he might need to back it off a little bit. Yeah, I, I think he has, which is why riders are get, getting around him one by one. And he was putting up a fight. That wouldn't happen because he has the speed and the, and the experience to go fast here at Southwick, but he's just going, you know what? I'm not going to get hurt out here today. I came here to have fun, and he'd like to leave with the smile he arrived with. As Orleska's in fifth, let's go to Cameron with this mechanic. The relationship between yourself, Ezra, and Kawasaki seem to be working brilliantly. Yeah, it's going really good. We've been working hard all year, and just trying to get a fire back into Ezra. He's been hurt the past couple years, and we're just trying to get some fire back in on his podium at Mount Morris with the first one since 99. And um, he really wants to improve his outdoor finishes, and uh, he just, if he keeps working hard, it's going to happen for him. Well, we'll see how it winds up today. Right on, thanks. He is doing better. I mean, you look at what he's got going today. He may end up on the podium again overall. That'd be two in a row, and, and I didn't realize, you know what? Thinking about it, going all the way back to 99, we're, we're probably putting too big expectations on Lutz compared to what his results have shown over the years, and, and he's just got to probably, you know, just not worry so much about Carmichael out front and just try to get the best out of himself and build some confidence so that he can battle with Carmichael eventually. But at the same time, Kawasaki's not paying him to finish behind Kyle Lewis. Oh, you're exactly right, Davey, and I don't know that Kyle's going to finish ahead of him in this moto, but uh, Ezra, really, he just needs to keep doing what he's been doing, and that's how he's going to build the confidence to be able to go out front and race a little bit probably outside his comfort zone and have the confidence to know he's going to be able to get all the way through the moto that way. And no disrespect to Kyle Lewis, to me, the best American motocrosser never get a factory deal. We will be back to Southwick. Ricky Carmichael out front and in control. I am Emmett Smith. I'm Emmett Smith. I'm Emmett Smith. I am Emmett Smith. I am Emmett Smith. No, really, I am. Worried that the you shopping online really isn't you? That's why Visa's introducing Verified by Visa, a new security service that will help protect Visa cards from unauthorized online use with a personal password. This service is only available on select Visa cards issued by participating banks. I am Emmett Smith. Please! To learn more and to check if your card is eligible for this service, go to Visa.com slash Verified. Oh, my. Let me help you with that. <laughs> you going to make a collect call? Just dial to the center with 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -L -L -T -T. It's free for you and cheap for them. Whoa. What? Oh, come on. Save on every call. Use 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. Customizing your car? Stop by Monarchy for performance mufflers with attitude, high energy, good looks, and increased horsepower. Plus, a free race game. That's Monarchy performance. Monarchy, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. People everywhere are discovering the power of cheap tickets. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You can find airfares up to 40% off on the web or on the phone. Airfares you can't find anywhere else. Cheap tickets, the best kept secret in travel for over 15 years. 
I'm Jay Moore. ESPN likes my show so much they've moved it to prime time. He's tough, yet sensitive. He's smart, yet humble. More Sports kicks off the block with Paul Pierce of the Boston Celtics, Tuesday, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Speed World's presentation of AMA Motocross is brought to you by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. Honda, performance first. We are back at Southwick. While we are gone, look at this crash by third place Sebastian Tortelli. You know, Davey, I don't understand why they smooth that section out. They keep smoothing it. And that's what you get. You get high-speed crashes where he hits his head hard, and that might take him out of the series altogether. I'm just, I don't understand why they keep grooming this track when they should just leave it alone, and it, it would take finesse to get through there, not high speed. And you wouldn't be able to get yourself in trouble because you couldn't get your speeds up that much. Yeah. Check out this back section. Perfect. That one's crashing right there, you know? I mean, that's, that's the thing with this track that makes it so unique. And when they go back out and smooth it out all the time, it just it sets the riders up for a crash like Tortelli had. And, and I, I really feel for him. He's, he's toughing it out. He got up from that, and he's still pushing hard to try to finish up in the top 10. But, you know, the series is getting away from him. And it's not like Tortelli doesn't work hard for this. He's riding and training just as hard as Carmichael, but it just doesn't seem to come together for him. Speaking of Carmichael, he is about to put his eighth straight moto win in the books here in the 2002 AMA Chevy Trucks U.S. National Motocross Championships. Came to Southwick, didn't get the whole shot either time, but here he is with his second checkered flag, a solid 1-1. Ricky Carmichael remains undefeated. Is anyone going to beat this guy? Well, it, it's possible, but it's going to take a career day for somebody to do it because I think Carmichael has speed that he hasn't even shown us yet. It's Carmichael with another Moto win. Barry, Lusk, Dowd, and Kyle Lewis rounding out the top five. Tortelli able to dust himself off for six, and Doug Henry ends his day with a seventh-place finish. Let's go to Cameron down in the winner's circle. He is with Ricky Carmichael. Well, once again, guys, your overall champion, Ricky Carmichael, here on the podium. Four races so far this year. Total dominance. You won every moto. What else is left for Ricky Carmichael? I mean, the championship's obviously got to be in your sights. Uh, definitely. You know, uh, it's a long season. Anything can happen. Weather can come into play. And, uh, you know, the Honda's working awesome for me. And I, I can't say enough for the bike and my mechanic, Chad Watts. we got a good thing going. And uh, my trainer, Eldon Baker, has been working me hard. And I feel good. It's awesome to win here at Southwick. Well, something a little bit different. A guy that a lot of people compare you to is Jeff Ward, and he got his first ever IRL win last night. I don't know if you got to check it out. Uh, I didn't get to check it out, but I heard congratulations, Wardy. That's, uh, that's awesome. You've been working hard for it for a long time, and uh, you finally got that thing. So uh, the pressure's on. Now you should be able to win a bunch. Uh, you'll be expected to win. <laughs> well, expected to win. This guy is expected to win all the time. Ricky Carmack, we'll have to see how it unfolds from here, but congratulations. Thanks a lot. Definitely got to thank Honda, DC, Fox, Oakley. <clears throat> Gatorade, and everyone who's helped me get here, you know, uh, everything's going good. Got to keep the ball rolling. Well, David, not only does Ricky get another win with Fonseca finishing second, 125, gets a shave, too. Well, I think, you know, he's going to be glad to shave. I think they're going to be more happy the fact that Fonseca finally did do well. Let's go down to Cameron. He's with seventh overall, Doug Henry. Doug, welcome back to motocross, and I think you got the points you were looking for. Yeah, I did. Uh, um, you know, I was really just, I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't have much riding or anything like that. The fans like you. Yeah. It's great coming here. I, I have a blast. I think everybody asks me what's what's the trick to the starts. It's the fans behind me. You know, they're just going so crazy. I got to get a good start for them. <laughs> well, I'd be remiss in my reporting duties if I didn't ask you if we might see it another national real soon. I don't think so. I kind of, I got my knee is kind of bad. I haven't been doing much riding, so I want to try and get it to, you know, try and get it all healed up and uh, get it, you know, safe because it's it's kind of loose and I want to get it solid and. Maybe go ahead and fix it or whatever. I don't know. I'm going to go home. to. The, I, I told everybody uh, I'm going to go home and uh, give the, everybody extra grain today. I made some money. <laughs> right on. Well, congratulations. A great job today. All right. Thanks. All right, and with that, Doug Henry goes back to the life of a New England farmer, but probably the fastest farmer in the world. Taking a look at our point standings, Ricky Carmichael with a perfect 200 after eight motos. For more on AMA scheduling, results, everything, log on to usmotocross.com.
Well, for David Bailey, Cameron Steele, Doug Henry, and 20,000 of his closest friends, this is Davey Coombs saying so long from Southwick. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Coming into the 2002-125 motocross season, four riders had the lofty but realistic goal of capturing the championship. Unfortunately for Grant Langston, his dream is...